most likely college is going to be the busiest years of your life. It might be the busiest thus far and might be the busiest for a couple of years to come. So how do you maintain productivity and maintain your schedule while in college? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Josh and I'm currently a senior in my undergraduate studies as a pre-med major. So my actual major is biomedical science with a chemistry and a Spanish minor. So being all of these, how do I maintain my schedule and maintain productivity so I don't fall behind on all of my assignments? Well, you can do some research for yourself and you'll find tens, maybe hundreds of apps that help you maintain productivity, maintain a daily to-do list, or even just your schedule. And there are a lot of options for you out there and you can find what works best for you. I simply have the calendar that's already on my phone that I don't even need to download or work because I already know how it works, where I schedule out my day and I set myself a reminder for maybe 30, 60, two hours, three hours before anything is due. So I find my classes, I put those classes in. I find out what assignments are due when they're due, put those in, set that reminder for myself, depending on how long I think that assignment will take. So if I have a regular homework assignment that might take me 30 minutes, I give myself a 60 minute reminder before it's due, let's say at 11.59. So at 10.59, I'll get that reminder if I haven't already done it in order to give myself adequate time to complete the assignment. I find for myself, it's easier to have an online planner as opposed to an in-person planner because I can set that reminder for myself so I know exactly when something is due instead of constantly referring to my in-person planner. Now, I have a couple of friends that work better with an in-person planner because they tend to have anxiety about those assignments and check it themselves constantly. And if that works best for you and you want to check it constantly, then go ahead. You know what works best for you and you know yourself better than I obviously do, better than a lot of other people would. Now, in terms of extracurriculars, meaning clubs, intramural sports, as well as a job, how do I maintain all of these? So what works best for me is scheduling out myself so I'm actually busy enough where I'm productive in the time that I have to myself. Now, that's kind of confusing. But what I mean is I work best under pressure. So what I like to do is schedule myself so I have, let's say, two hours of free time as opposed to eight to complete a one-hour assignment. If I have an eight-hour gap in order to complete a one-hour assignment, then I might wait until the very last minute because I have, like, oh, so much free time, I can do this whenever I want, keep pushing it back. But if I've only got two hours, then I have to be productive in those two hours. And honestly, this might not work for a lot of people because it hasn't came to bite me back in the butt. It's actually worked out well for me so far. That said, being a senior, I also have senioritis, and so a lot of these things I like to push back anyways. So if I set myself a two-hour reminder and it's a one-hour assignment, then I just physically have to finish it, even though I don't want to, which isn't the best mentality, but hey, it's worked so far. But like I said, you can take these with a grain of salt because you know yourself better than anybody else does, better than I do. So if I recommend something that I do that you think won't work for you or you definitely know won't work for you, don't do it. Find what works best for you. If you work well under pressure, then you can schedule yourself so you have very limited time in order to spend that time doing assignments or spending time to yourself, whatever that may be, if you work well under pressure. If you don't and you need a lot of time to complete an assignment, but you like having that amount of time, then don't overschedule yourself. Burnout is a real thing. Senioritis is definitely a thing. And so it's tough when you have senioritis and burnout and you overschedule yourself for four years straight in order to complete these things that are due. I'm lucky enough where it worked out where I'm the president of a club, I'm on the e-board for another club, and I'm also the founder and president of a third club. Not to mention being a regular member for a couple of other clubs, I'm involved in about six to seven clubs every semester. On top of these clubs, I'm also involved in a couple of intramural sports, whether that's soccer, spike ball, or volleyball. So I put these in my schedule to make sure that if they're online, I have them online and I have the time to do them, but if they're in person, they don't overlap with either an assignment that's due or a class or another club. So I do the same thing with these intramurals as I do my classes and my homework assignments, where I put them into my calendar and I set myself a reminder 30, 60, you know, two hours before in order to give myself adequate time to either complete the assignment or to drive to campus for that intramural and make sure I'm not late. Now it just so happens that sometimes things do overlap. Even though I like scheduling myself, there are some times where I have to go immediately from one that ends at eight, let's say, to another one that starts at eight. So what I have to do is leave five, 10 minutes early in order to get there. So let's say on Tuesday nights, because it's the truth, I have to come from a club meeting that ends at nine o'clock to an intramural that starts at nine o'clock. And I'm on the e-board for this club, so it's definitely important that I'm at these meetings. So I let them know ahead of time, at least a week in advance, hey, I'm going to be attending this intramural game because luckily these are every other week and so I don't need to go every single week. But I let them know ahead of time that I'm gonna be five, 10 minutes late. So they present all the important information first and give myself enough time where if I leave five, 10 minutes early, I'm not missing a lot of important information. If it happens to be the case where I do miss some important information at the very tail end of that meeting, I have a couple communication lines where they can let me know what I missed so I can be on top of my game for the next meeting. But on top of doing these assignments and doing these clubs, doing these intramurals, doing these classes, make sure you spend time for yourself. You don't want to burn out too quickly. Like I said, it's a long road. You may be completing it in three, four or five years. And so scheduling yourself like this for five straight years might be a lot. And you might burn out after two. Then you have to readjust your plan in order to find out what works best for you. So I'd say the takeaways from this video are find out what works best for you, whether that's an online planner or an in-person planner. Don't overschedule yourself so you burn out too quickly because it's a long road and you want to maintain kind of your productivity over the course of those three, four, five years and not burn out too quickly. 
Also make time for yourself. That's the most important thing I'd say is even though I work well under pressure, I do need to have time to myself. So if I have an assignment that's due, I might want to spend time to myself first and then complete that assignment. But I also might want to complete that assignment first, then I have more time to myself because I might not be sure exactly how long an assignment might take. So it sometimes works where you give yourself a two hour block and it takes maybe two hours, maybe more than two hours. And so then you're kind of stressed for doing that assignment. But because you know what works best for you, you'll know what works best for you. I know what works best for me, and so I'm able to do these kind of things. But if you obviously think, oh, that's stupid, it's not gonna work for me, then then don't do it, it's not gonna work for you, and you know yourself better than I do. But other than that, college can be some of the best years of your life, so make sure that you enjoy them. If you're planning on applying to any graduate schools, make sure you have all the prerequisites that are required for those graduate schools. Make sure you have the grades maintained, make sure you have the volunteer hours, the clinical hours, the research hours, whatever that may be. Saying those because I'm a pre-med looking at graduate school, medical school, I'm gonna need all of those things. But if you're looking at graduate school for something else, definitely check the online website for those schools in order to see their specific requirements. Other than that, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.